Mr. Bone. I would advise you not to interfere. I was willing to shoot Captain Rhino, and I'm willing to shoot you. Hello. Put that phone down. Get me the radio tower. Put it down. In the World War II classic romance, Casablanca, Conrad Veidt, as Major Strasser, played the quintessential Nazi. You will give us the names? Veidt was the uniformed presence World War II audiences loved to hate. So? But this most sinister of screen Nazis was, in fact, a German expatriate, blacklisted by Hitler and a fervent anti-Nazi. I never knew that. Veidt once said of the character of Strasser, this role epitomizes the cruelty and the criminal instincts and murderous trickery of the typical Nazi. I know this man well. He is the reason I gave up Germany many years ago. You see what I mean? If Laszlo's presence in a cafe can inspire this unfortunate demonstration, what more will his presence in Casablanca bring on? I advise that this place be shut up at once. But everybody's having such a good time. Yes, much too good a time. The place is to be closed. But I've no excuse to close it. Find one. Born Hans Walter Conrad Weiss in 1893 in Potsdam, Germany, Weit began his acting career by studying with the legendary theater director, Max Reinhardt. Success on the stage followed, with one critic in 1917 noticing the young actor with his praise and prediction. This is a strange looking young man with a face you never forget. His eyes haunt. He dominated the stage. I forgot the others when he was on. I hope his fate will not be to go to films, but undoubtedly film producers will be rushing for his services. And they were. Veidt stunned movie audiences in the silent classic, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, the film that introduced German expressionist cinema to the world. Decades later, the English director, Michael Powell, said that Veidt, in the early years, was the great German cinema. He was invention, control, imagination, irony, and elegance. Veidt was one of the greatest names in European cinema. It was inevitable that America would beckon. In 1926, he came to California and once again found great success, this time as a Hollywood star with films like The Beloved Rogue and The Man Who Laughs. All that changed with the coming of sound. Weitz's imperfect English sent him back to Germany, but not for long. In 1932, with the Nazis gaining control, Weitz left for England, where he perfected his English and continued his film career. But a trip back to Germany in 1937 led to Weitz being forcibly detained by the German authorities. Weitz came to know fascism firsthand. The spirit of love has triumphed. Yes, God's in his heaven, yes! <laughs> he was only allowed to leave when his British employer intervened and threatened an international scandal. Veidt never returned to Germany and became a British citizen. When World War II began, in a generous gesture to his new country, Veidt loaned his personal fortune to the British war effort. In 1940, he came back to America to work on the film The Thief of Baghdad. He was encouraged to stay in the U.S. and continue making films, always donating a large portion of his salary to British war relief. They all have tremendous crushes on you, Kurt. Why do you suppose it is? But Veidt's noble career was cut short with his sudden death of a heart attack in 1943 at the age of 49. His villains, Nazis or not, with their distinctive manners and clipped English, were often more intriguing than the leading men. I don't like you, Mr. Price. No? Do you imagine I like you? Unfortunately for you, I'm in a position to enforce my dislikes. Conrad Veidt gave us much more than the characters he played. He also gave of himself. Conrad Veidt. What a character. I'll feed a 